Good morning. Welcome to Bethany. We are, in, we are an inclusive faith community. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter where you are today, you are welcome. I'm Ella Anderson, a member of the Bethany community, and I'm glad you've chosen to worship with us today remotely. Normally right now, we'd be greeting one another. So take a minute and do that in the comments. Say hello, give a like, give a heart. Peace be with you. Tell us where you're worshiping from and who you're worshiping with. Let us greet one another. We're dispersed in our homes all across the country, the region, and in some cases across the country. And yet in Christ, we are one. So we're going to begin by centering our hearts as one. Let's take a deep breath together. The breath we breathe is a gift from God, the breath of creation that connects every being in creation. Take another breath. Then I invite you to place your hand on your heart. This is the love beating within you, a compassion as constant as Christ. Every person alive is linked by our beating hearts. As you breathe and connect with your heart center, hear this. You are a child of God, holy and beloved. Nothing, nothing, nothing can take that identity from you. You are a child of God, holy and beloved. This is the heart of the matter.
Today is Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. It is 50 days since Easter. Can you believe it's been that long? We talked last week about how long ago Easter was. And I wonder if you remember some of the things that happened at your house on Easter. It's been 50 days. It was a long time for Jesus' friends, too. They had had some time with Jesus. Then last week we talked about how Jesus went away. I imagine they felt kind of lost and afraid again. Today's story is about what happened next. The disciples were in Jerusalem. Here they are. Look at them, so many. They were all excited. They could feel that something wonderful was about to happen. Early one morning, whoosh, a strong wind blew through the room where they were gathered and the house shook and lights like tongues of fire wonder what that looked like. Was it like candles? Or a campfire? Lights rested on everyone's head, and they felt the power of God's Holy Spirit within them. Holy Spirit. Have you ever heard of that before? Holy Spirit is like the feeling you get when your mom or your dad or someone who loves you wraps you in a big hug. It's the feeling you get when you give someone a gift. Or the feeling you get when you see a rainbow or make a new friend. That's what the Holy Spirit is like. It helps us love each other. And on that day, their hearts filled with love and they began to talk. But they were talking in different languages, Greek and Latin, Egyptian and Libyan, even Arabic. What other languages do you know words from? Maybe Spanish? At that time, Jerusalem, where they were, was crowded with visitors from all over the world. When the people heard the noise of the wind, they hurried to see what had happened, and the visitors were amazed to discover the disciples speaking so many languages. Everyone could understand them. Peter spoke to the crowd. What was prophesied has come true, he said. God has made Jesus both our Savior and our friend. 
Through him, God's wonderful dream for the world, that everyone would love each other, is coming true. And that's what happened on Pentecost. It was a very good day. Would you pray with me? Dear God, fill us with the Holy Spirit and help us love each other. Amen. That story was from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, if you want to go back and read it in your Bible later. Our text for the sermon this morning is another Pentecost text, a little different text about the Holy Spirit, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read in a few minutes verses 1 and then 4 through 12. We'll read that in a minute. Pentecost is not only the day the Holy Spirit was given, but it is also considered the birthday of the church. That's why we have balloons today, because what birthday is complete without balloons? It was born in a rush of wind and fire, so today's color is bright, fiery red. We were born in an explosion of the Spirit, a radical crossing of boundaries, an explosion of diversity and difference and love across all of that. That's who we were born to be. A beautiful, profound expression of egalitarianism and diversity and love. That's what the church was born to be. But... If you've spent any time around real churches, you'll know we don't always live up to that. In fact, lots of times we fall short. That started at the very beginning. Just a few years after Pentecost, a man named Paul was going around the Roman Empire starting churches, and he started one in the city of Corinth. And there in the city of Corinth, the church was vibrant and growing and wonderful until they started to get competitive. I can relate. I'm a person who gets competitive. Maybe you don't, but I do. They started to get competitive about who had the best gifts, who was most important in the community, who really mattered because of what they could do or what they brought to the table. And so Paul wrote them, and this is what he wrote them in that context. He said, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. And there are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God who produces every one of them. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each for the common good. A, a word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person. And a word of knowledge to another person by the same Spirit. And faith to still another by the same Spirit, and gifts of healing to another in the same Spirit, and performance of miracles to another, and prophecy to another, and the ability to tell spirits apart to another, and tongues to another, and interpretation of tongues to another, and all these things are produced by the one and same Spirit, who gives what she wants to each person. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts. And all the parts of the body are one body, 
even though they are many. Everyone has a gift. You have a gift, each of you, all of you, and they're all different, all essential. Comparison, ranking, calling some more important or more essential than others gets us way off track. Paul reminds the Corinthians that the Spirit gives us particular gifts for the sake of one body. I think this is really counterintuitive for us in our culture. That our gifts would be for the good of the whole. We don't really respect fitting in, or being part of a system, or being a cog in the wheel. We respect those who stand out, who walk their own way. And there's plenty to be said for diversity and difference, especially on Pentecost. But what Paul reminds us is that our diversity and our difference is for the good of each other. Our gifts are for the good of one body. We are knit into one body, one organism. And boy, aren't we all receiving an object lesson right now in how we are one organism. But it's not only our illness that unites us. It is also our gifts that tie us together. And living together in one body with all of our different gifts requires some push and some pull. Sometimes it requires new growth and change in us. Sometimes it requires some restraint. You might think of it, this push and pull, this need for our gifts to grow and change and our gifts sometimes to be restrained. You might think of it as being like an appendix and kudzu. Stay with me here. I have no doubt that the appendix once had very special, important gifts to offer to our body. But it didn't evolve along with us. It is as if it stood there and said, no, I am not going to change. I am going to continue doing things as I have always done them. And our body marched right along past it. And now no one thinks or talks about the appendix unless we get very, very sick from it. This is a time that calls for growth and change. We're all having to change in incredible ways right now. The ways we connect, the ways we stay sane, the ways we form community, all of that requires creativity and evolution and growth right now. We all have the gifts for those things, each in our own way. And we're called to let those gifts evolve and grow and change, or else we get stuck like an appendix. But at the same time, unrestrained growth and change isn't healthy for a body. There's a push and a pull, and we also need some restraint. I come from the South. In the South, there's a vine called kudzu. It was brought over from Japan in the 1870s to stop soil erosion, which it does, but it also doesn't stop growing. Kudzu will consume anything in its path. It's sort of like blackberries or scotch broom, except instead of only consuming a field or a forest, kudzu will pull down a whole power line. Kudzu has been known to cover entire houses. Kudzu will consume a barn. The United States government spends half a billion dollars every year trying to keep kudzu from covering the entire South. This is what unrestrained growth does. Our gifts are good, but unrestrained growth 
hurts us all. And boy, aren't we learning about restraint right now. We are all given gifts. Some of us have the gift of encouragement. Some of us the gift of listening. Some of us the gift of reaching out. Some of us the gift of working with technology with agility and flexibility. Some of us the gift of embracing change. Some of us the gift of reminding us of how it's always been. Some of us the gift of tradition and some of us the gift of innovation. Some of us the gift of prayer. And each of these gifts is for the good of the body. To help us grow. To help us hang in there. To help us stay sane and stay connected. That's what the Spirit does. Gives us gifts for the good of the whole body. That's what our gifts are intended for. So I wonder, what are your gifts? What are your gifts? What are you uniquely equipped and situated to do? And how is the Spirit calling you to use those gifts for the good of the whole body? I think that's our question to reflect on this week. Amen. this community in the last 12 weeks, welcome. I'm so glad you're here with us worshiping. I'd love to get to know you. You're welcome to email me at pastor.wiles at gmail.com and we can strike up a conversation and get to know one another. Or you can message me here on Facebook. I read and respond to all of those. There's a lot to love about this community. 
One of the things I love most is the generosity. In particular, I've been celebrating the generosity y'all have uh, demonstrated as we've collected supplies for Nativity House. You collected 30 bags of things like sweatpants and new underwear and t-shirts and sweatshirts and disposable razors and paper products for food distribution. 30 bags and $1,100. I am overwhelmed and when we dropped all this off at Nativity House this week, they were overwhelmed. Thank you for your generosity. Your generosity also enables us to continue functioning through all of this. It enables us to pay our hourly employees as well as our salaried employees through this crisis. Your generosity makes our community what it is. If you haven't ever given to Bethany, it's really easy. You can go to bethanytacoma.org backslash give. There are ways to give one time or on a recurring basis. If you send checks on a regular basis, please continue to send those. They are sustaining us. There is much to be grateful for in this community. One of the things I'm most grateful for is the way that our life together is characterized by prayer. We pray with and for one another every single week. We pray for the joys in our lives and the sorrows. We pray for things we're scared about and hopeful about. And we pray for our world, too. We pray for those things that break our hearts. What's on your mind for prayer this week, Bethany? I invite you to share those prayer concerns and joys in the comments as Aaron sings and leads us in prayer.
join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, go out into the world this week and know that you are gifted. The Spirit has blown upon you, lit you up with fire, and given you gifts. Use those for the good of the body. As you go, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the unending love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit this day, unto your life eternal. Amen. <laughs>